algebra students. Today we're going to solve a radical equation. We're going to solve this radical equation right there. Now, what is it that makes this a radical equation? It's the radical, okay? It's that root sign. Okay, whenever you have a square root or a cube root or a fourth root, we're going to deal with the square root today. It's the easier one or the easiest one. Uh, this is a radical equation. So, uh, like whenever we're solving an equation, our job is to figure out what that unknown is, what that x is. So, what to do? Step one, isolate the radical. That is, get this radical by itself. And there's a real easy way to do that. There's a plus two right there. Let's just do the inverse operation. Let's subtract two, okay? So I'm gonna subtract two here and two there. And that means I'm gonna get the square root of three x minus two equals x minus two. Easy enough. Okay, now what do I do? Well, now I've got the radical by itself, and that radical is kind of disturbing me. I want to get rid of it. Well, how do you get rid of a square root? You do the inverse operation. You square it. And whatever you do to this side, you have to do to that side. So that means I'm going to square both sides. Now I have to be careful when I'm squaring both sides. This, this is easy. I'm just going to take that thing squared, and I'm going to get, uh, well, 3x minus 2, okay? I'm just, basically, I'm just getting rid of the square root. Over here, when I square this, don't just say this thing squared minus this thing squared. Oh, no. You have to square the quantity. You have to square the whole thing. And so, what's x minus 2 times x minus 2? Why, it's x squared minus 4x plus 4. Multiply the binomial times itself, and you'll see that that's true. Okay, well now I have basically a linear equation equals a quadratic equation. Okay, uh, what's, uh, what do I do to, uh, to solve this? Well, I'll just subtract the linear part from the quadratic part. So in other words, I'm going to subtract 3x and add 2x to both sides. And that's going to get me a 0 over here. And over here, that's going to get me nothing happens to my x squared, but I, now I have negative 4x minus 3x is minus 7x, and now I have 4 plus 2, so that's plus 6. x squared minus 7x plus 6. So now I have to solve this quadratic equation, um, and it's equal to 0. Man, if only I had, I don't know, one method or two methods or three methods. I do have three methods that I could use to solve this thing. I could factor it. I could complete the square. I could use a quadratic formula. So many choices. Uh, I think I'm going to factor this one, okay, because I can factor it. This is going to equal, I'll set my factors up, and I have an x squared there, so I'm going to put an x here and an x here. I know that my product is positive and my sum is negative. That means I have two negatives. And uh, let's see, two numbers whose product is 6 that add up to 7, that would be 6 and 1. So this is going to be x minus 6 times x minus 1 equals 0. And if x minus 6 times x minus 1 equals 0, then that means either x equals 1 or x equals 6. And those are my two possible answers. Now one last step to radical equations, and that is, this is not a suggestion. This is a commandment. You must plug in both of the answers, okay? In the past, I've said, oh yeah, you know, uh, plug it into your original uh, uh, equation, make sure it works, just to make sure you haven't screwed up somewhere. Mm -mm, that's not what's happening this time. You're plugging in to make sure it works because possibly you didn't mess up anywhere and you still got an extraneous solution, a phantom solution, a solution that looks like it should work, but it doesn't work. In this case, we do have one. So let's plug them both in. Let's start with uh, x equals 1. So I would have the square root of 3 times 1 is just 3 minus 2 plus 2. And uh, that's the square root of 1. That gets me 1 plus 2 equals 3. Does that equal... One? No, it doesn't. So no, that does not work. So one does not work. Now let's try six. Okay, the square root of three times six is going to get me 18 minus two plus two. 
18 minus 2 is 16. The square root of 16 is 4. Plus 2 is 6. And does that equal 6? Yes, it does. So yes, that one works. So my answer here is x equals 6, not x equals 1. Now, why is that? Why did I come up with an answer that didn't turn out to be right? Well, I find the best way to, uh, to explain why this works is by looking at a graph. Okay? Now, you can pretty much always illustrate an equation by, by just graphing it. You graph the left side, you graph the right side, you see where they intersect, and there's your solution. So let's take a look at what this would look like. Let me get a better marker here. Okay. Well, that one's not much better either. Um, no, you can see that. Okay. So those are my two axes. Uh, and I'm going to do the, the square root of 3x minus 2 plus 2. And what it looks like is I'm going to go to the point uh, 2 thirds and 2. And I'm going to draw something kind of like that. Okay. That's not a perfect graph, but yeah, it's okay. Okay. And uh, what this is, is it's half a parabola lying on its side. Okay, so if you, if you think about this, if I continued this along this way, then it would be an entire parabola on its side. Okay, and then what, is the, uh, what does the graph of y equals x look like? Well, it's just going up like here. So our answer is this guy right here. Okay, the point 6 and uh, the point 6, 6. Okay. Our phantom answer, our extraneous solution, is this point right here. It's where if I continued the parabola around, then it would have intersected that point right there. That's the point 1, 1. However, uh, uh, square root functions are not full parabolas on their side. Square root functions are just the north side of the parabola. And so it just looks like that. So this is actually not an intersection point after all. That's why you get this extraneous solution. Okay, hope that explains things a little bit. See you at the next video.